So today was an exciting day. Apple released a plethora of updates at WWDC. And in today's video, we're gonna go through all the new updates for iOS 14 and the iPhone. What is going on everyone? It is Mike. Welcome back to Tech 24 seven TV, where we bring you the best in unboxing and product reviews so you can make informed buying decisions. So if you like product review video and how to videos, just like this one, make sure you are subscribed with notifications to be alerted when that new content drops. So first up, device support is going to be very broad. iOS 14 is support devices as far back as the iPhone 6S, which was released in, I think, September 2015. So it's somewhat amazing that after five years, Apple still showing love for older devices, delivering new features and security updates for at least the next 12 months. Again, pretty amazing if you ask me. Now, first up, the home screen is getting a facelift, and it's really going to be significant here at this point. I don't know. I think maybe since 2010 is the last time that there was a significant update to the iPhone. Apple is introducing three key features for the home screen. First, it's widgets. Now, iOS widgets can be placed anywhere on the home screen to give you kind of glanceable information from any stock or third-party app. Now, you can create a stack of app widgets by going ahead and dragging one widget on top of the other. Now, there's also going to be suggestions, including all the stock apps, including to the, like I said, the series suggestion and the app stack. Now, once you enter in the Jiggly mode, let's go ahead and press plus. And here are the different widgets that are available. Now, of course, as app developers update more of their apps, you'll see more apps or more widgets appear in here. But these are the ones that are available here. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and uh, if I want to go ahead and put maps on there, I can go ahead and take maps and drag it over the screen. And you see there that widget that was on the home screen just kind of moved over to the next screen. If you go back here, here it is. And then here, even on another one, I have this smart widget. Now, what is cool about the widgets is that I can go into, let's say this app stack here, I can hold down, I can say, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and you know, see less suggestions like this because it's doing, this is a series suggestion one. So here's the one where the, the stack where you can go ahead and rotate through all the locations or all the different app suggestions. Now, the second thing that they're adding is gonna be app library. Now, app library really resembles a hybrid between combining the best parts of the app drawer, which is found on Android, and the list view on Apple Watch. Now, to get to App Library, what you want to go ahead and do is hold on the home screen. Let's go ahead and click on here, the pages. If I want to go ahead and remove any one of these pages and have the apps kind of fold into App Library, I just uncheck mark it, click done, and you see here, there it is, the last page. And then there's the app library. Now this app library is sorted by suggestions recently added and then all these different categories that are auto categorized by iOS. And if you tap on here, you see an A to Z or an alphabetical listing of all the apps that you have on your phone. Third thing Apple is doing here is gonna be picture in picture. Now picture in picture, unfortunately, only works right now with uh, with kind of Apple apps. Let's go and open up TV here. Now let's watch John Oliver. If you're not watching John Oliver, he's awesome. Get intro. And as soon as I go to the home screen, See, there he is. He's up in the corner. I can go ahead and move him around over here. I can swipe him over to the right. I can pull him back out. It doesn't really matter where he's at. I can go ahead and put John Oliver. I can put him in a corner. If I want to go ahead and expand that back, I'm going to go ahead and type on there and click that button. Also new this year is going to be redesigned incoming call notifications for phone calls and video calls when the phone's unlocked. So as you see here, my phone is unlocked. Here's the incoming call notification. I can swipe up to dismiss, which that dismisses the call. But if I call back here, I can go ahead and swipe down and that brings up the call notification UI. Also new this year is I can click on this button where that used to take over the whole screen. I can go ahead and just send a quick message. And this is gonna work for voice calls, it's gonna work for video calls, and any other third-party app, like any VoIP app that uses this new API. Now, additionally, let's just say I wanna go ahead and uh, we're gonna make a call, let's say 611. All right, I can hold down on this button here also, and I get this pop-up where it shows all the different source locations or all the different destination locations that I can go ahead and uh, send the audio to. Now, what we also have here is that we have, when you're using Siri, there's gonna be a compact UI where Siri's here at the bottom. There's no longer that entire modal kind of takeover of the screen that we had in iOS 13 and below. And you see how this text here is gonna be at the bottom. You can actually turn that on and off. It's actually a really cool feature. Now, moving on, let's go to messages here. Messages is actually a lot of features in here. You can go ahead and take conversations and I can pin this to the top. So I always see her at the front. I can go ahead and make notifications, inline notifications in group messages. Unfortunately, I don't have any to show here. In addition to reorganize contact info, I can click on info and it's gonna show me all this information. And this information is reorganized in such a way where it looks, it's more visually appealing. So this photo picker here is, is new for iOS 14 as well with the ability to go ahead and flip between albums. And I can go ahead and search for this. I can say cars and all the cars are gonna show up. Look at that car. That's actually from an album. And in addition, you can go ahead and do at replies 
Next is gonna be settings. So there's a lot of updates, a lot of little nuggets here in settings. Let's go ahead and find some of them. So now here we have Bluetooth. We have Bluetooth AirPods and the device specific details have been put into the Bluetooth menu where they used to be in the about menu. Also here new in settings, we have menu settings general. And then we have about, we see whether the device is carrier locked where before that wasn't available. Next we have uh, reduce sounds and that's gonna be in settings, settings, sounds and haptics. And then that's gonna be right here where it says reduce headphone sounds. iPhone can analyze your headphone audio to reduce any sounds that it says set over a certain decibel level. Now we have show home controls in control center. So let's go down, we'll go to control center. And here you can turn this on so you have some of your favorite accessories shown inside of Control Center. I don't want that because I don't want it crowded. But once I go ahead and take that off, you can go ahead and turn on sleep mode, uh, which obviously is a new feature this year. Uh, you also have app library. So if we go into here, go to home screen, you have the ability when you say, uh, when you add a new app, do you want it to go to the home screen or the app library only? I want to go to app library and notification badges show an app library. That's actually a little bit too much for me. I don't need to see that. Next here, we're gonna go to wallpaper and there's new, new live wallpaper. I've actually never seen these wallpaper before and I don't have them on any of my, on any of my devices, but let me know if you've seen these before because these are definitely different to me. Now let's go down to settings, Siri and speech. We're gonna go to Siri feedback. Now there's a couple different options here where you can turn on silent mode, which you could before, and you could, but you could also turn it off uh, when you say and then also when you only say those two words. You can also show the captions, which I showed you in the beginning, and then always show speech feedback. Now, to set default browser and email client, I'll be honest with you, they had that on the screen. I cannot find that anywhere, but you can go ahead and do it. Security recommendations in, secure, in Safari. So here, Safari will say if there's any security recommendations based on information that it sees in your Safari password list. Now I can tell you here, I know for a fact I don't have duplicate passwords, but I have subdomains. Like for example, if you have nike.com and then shop.nike.com. Safari identifies that as having the duplicate password on two different domains, even really one is technically a subdomain. I think that's kind of annoying, but either way, that is something nice, which I think most people aren't even using here. That is very nice. Also new here in iOS 14, go on FaceTime and then we have detection uh, eye contact. So eye contact, this was introduced, I think last year, iOS 13 beta three, uh, but now we see here it's actually turned on, well, it's in beta still, but hopefully it'll come out to app in iOS 14 this year. Now in Memoji, a number of different customizations that you can go ahead and do. Hairstyles and being able to age yourself. But who wants to age themselves, seriously? Inside of Maps, there are new ways to go ahead and get around. So now in here, I have the option of riding a bike. Uh, in addition to that, you have EV routing of cars, and then you have the ability to go ahead and see speed cameras inside of iOS. Send an audio message to Michael Caputo. Hey you, what's going on? I can't believe you called me. What is going on, buddy? Hey, how you been? Can't wait to see you again. Uh, you can share your ETA if you're driving somewhere with Siri, say, hey, share my ETA. You can also, there's support for more languages. So now I can say, translate, I wanna go home into Japanese. There you go. In addition to language pairing, there's also support for more localization. Now on the lock screen here, let's go ahead and lock this. There are some new sounds whenever you turn on these buttons. And you see here that there is a notification at the very top where it says the system, system recently used the microphone. That is something also new in iOS 14. Let's go to the home, uh, the home app. And here we see kind of just a, a overall status of what the house is. So I have 10 lights on. Uh, there is motion in the studio, the temperature in the house, and then also that the TV is unavailable. Now let's just go ahead and drill down here. I'm gonna go ahead and drill down. See, there I am here. Uh, but if I go into more information about this camera, I can actually do some kind of ad automatic automation. Uh, we'll do the camera, boom, boom. So in addition to adding recommendations for suggested accessories, you can also do that for any new accessory or existing accessory, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see if I go here in a studio bookcase. Here we have, let's see, we can turn on adaptive lighting, which is another new feature. Uh, let's see here. So here are the automation suggestions. Uh, here are the automation suggestions for the different apps, uh, the different recommendations that we have here. 
what it is doing here, and I don't, I can't get it to work on my side, is that they're doing face recognition on the cameras, which I think there might be an update for the camera that is needed because it's not working for me. But let me know in the comments below if you're able to get that. I am using a, what camera am I using? I'm using a Logitech Circle 2. So that wraps it up for all the different features inside of Home. Now let's go to Safari where you're getting real-time dynamic web translation, the privacy reporting, which I showed you just a moment ago, and the password monitoring. We talked about picture in picture, how it's being supported. That also applies to FaceTime and there's improved video quality with devices that support up to 1080p video. Inside of files, it supports APFS. In the camera, you can go ahead and exp do exposure lock. Let's go ahead and go here. So here's the exposure compensation that I was talking about and you can click on that. I can go ahead and do quick toggle. Now this quick toggle features, these are now available on all devices where before they were just the iPhone 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. We we'll also have the ability to go ahead and hit the up button to quick burst photos. You get a better UI inside of night mode. You have quick take video for the iPhone XR and the iPhone XS, XS Max. And you have mirror, the ability to go ahead and turn on mirror selfies. And last but not least, you have spatial audio for AirPods, headphone accommodations, automatic device switching and battery notifications coming all for AirPods. Now, those are all the features I found in iOS 14 with the iPhone 11 Pro that I have here. But let me know if you found any other features, whether it's the iPhone 11 Pro or any other devices in the comments below. If you want to see another video like this for the iPad, I got something coming. It should arrive soon. I am Mike. This is Tech 24-7 TV. I'll talk to you in the next one.